Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here to read to you SCP-56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, please leave a like and comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. To start off with, we have SCP-56, also known as a beautiful person. Item number, SCP-56, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SV-56 is to be kept in a room of its choosing with whatever furnishings it expresses desire for. Level 1 personnel and above may interact with SV-56 at any time they choose for a time length not exceeding 2 hours. The subject is to be guarded by a minimum of 3 security staff at all times, with shift changes every 4 hours. Each guard is to be armed with non-lethal or tranquilizer pistols loaded with no less than 1500 microliters of Tranquilizer. Any irregularities in personnel and staff developed by exposure to SP-56 will result in psychological examination and relocation to site data expunged. The subject is to be allowed access to any object it de desires, with the exception of weapons, communication devices, an internet connection, and other SCP objects. It may wander in, in research sector or blank as it wills, but never allowed access to floors and exits. In the event of an emergency or if SCP-56 becomes violent, it is subdued and contained within its room if possible. At no time should or personnel attempt to harm SCP-56, see Addendum 2B. Description: SCP-56 is a being of variable size, gender, and appearance, which changes in response to the environment around it, especially in regards to living and sentient beings. Its well, uh, its common form is of a handsome man in his mid twenties, dressed in a garb of similar appearance to that of the personnel guardian, but of higher quality and aesthetic value. However, it has been recorded as taking these forms. A well. A large, well-groomed Labrador Retriever when exposed to Dr. Blank's dog. A woman of similar appearance to famous actor Scarlett Johansson when passing by a group of younger female staff. A female doctor in a white lab coat when speaking with various researchers. When asked to take an IQ test, the subject scored nearly 30 points higher than the highest scoring researcher available. A male bodybuilder who was able to lift nearly 250 kilograms twice on a, a bench press machine in the sector's gym. This was 30 kilograms heavier than the strongest security guard's maximum at the time. A couch of a, a couch of <laughs> extremely pleasing aesthetic value when left alone in the subject's room. These changes will occur will generally occur at a moment all people in the area lose focus on the subject, which occurs immediately upon exposure to a new object or person. See Addendum 3. The new changes has proved in inconsequential as any viewing of the tapes or feeds up for the same momentary confusion. Clothing will also change during this time, though SV-56 has yet to manifest any sort of tools or weapons. It is directly impossible to view 56's original or natural form. When left in an empty concrete cell and under close loop video surveillance, it took on the form of a higher quality camera and appeared to monitor the camera watching it. Further attempts to yield its natural form discovered that when alone, it had no real life signs, including body temperature, heartbeat, or weight. It is assumed by researchers that it could not exist without any sort of perception. Persons now in contact with the subject often report feeling jealous or unsatisfied, yet will often give a great deal of both positive and negative attention to SV-56, which can be predicted by their personality types. Security staff will, also, um, will often wish that they, they wish to follow the subject's commands, even if they, they dislike it or its current form. While researchers in extended contact with it will often try to argue and verbally abuse it, which usually results in the subjects sending them out in shame.
SCP-56 is quite capable of speech and can apparently communicate in any language, verbal or not, and has shown fluency in over 200 dialects, including those invented by cryptographers and hobbyists. It frequently treats the staff around it with disdain, though it's generally willing to do whatever is asked of it, so long as the inquiring does so in a submissive way. Expresses interest in magazines, fashion, automobiles, theoretical science, sports, and a multitude of other subjects, usually expressing, expressing greater knowledge and understanding of topic than the person communicating with it. Personnel will, gener will generally become angry, disenchanted, or disgusted with SCP-56 after speaking with it for a great length of, of time. Though they will try to speak with it again if possible, the question about other SCPs, it should fear and occasionally hatred and refuse to speak about any of them, even objects classified as safe. Additional, Subject was found to be working for a clothing design company redacted after an unusual number of homicides and suicides and mental breakdowns over models when working around SV-56 when Class E personnel attempted to detain it, their manner is provoked it to change into what appeared to be the form of data expunge, resulting in the death of 17 agents and 10 civilians. The incident was as covered up by I can, uh, aiming an employee a frame of psychopathy brought a firearm to work and attack act other workers. Addendum 1. Those with level 4 or above clearance refer to document and, and 9560. Document 9560, audio recording of first encounter with SCP-56. Just gonna do something really quick here. Hey, listen up. Whatever you are, you're under arrest for murder. No, go away. Clicking noise. Agent has drawn his weapon. You need to come with us right now. You don't want to do that, you stupid little man. Expressions of surprise. Presumably from Amon Lokers. The fuck? It looks just like data expunged. Gunshots and screaming. Tape ends. Addendum 2A. See, uh, see document. Well, we're about to see it as, as we are. Behavioral testing for SV56. Testing procedures. Data expunged. Addendum 2B. The results. One male class as the personnel armed with knife intent to harm subject. Subject appeared as a lean fit a man of approximately 20 years of age. Subject proceeds to disarm and kill personnel. One female class C personnel bearing a bottle of fine wine intent to offer subject gift. Subject appeared as a beautiful woman accepted a gift. And upon tasting spit back into in a personnel space before waving her away. Two classy personnel, both male and female, carrying nothing and intending nothing. Subject appeared as a beautiful woman in a well tailored business suit. Examined both personnel, then dismissed them. Ten classy personnel, all male, intending and carrying nothing. Subject appeared as a beautiful woman, dressed in a low cut red dress. After a fraction of ten minutes, all personnel began showing signs of irritation. And five minutes later, broke out in fighting. So I'll them a wave after watching them for seven minutes. One female level four, or personnel, well to be a guest looking in on facility, carried nothing and tang nothing. So it appeared as an extremely aesthetic pleasing woman and displayed a large lexicon and understanding of management skills. So it's personnel for nearly 90 minutes, unit until a personnel became infuriated and left the room. Addendum three. Note from Dr. Kenneth. I was recently informed that 56 has repeatedly requested access to the internet. 
When I asked 56 about this, it told me that we were unable to provide it with enough sycophants, and that I wanted the whole world to know its face. Needless to say, its request was denied. Now we go on to SCP-57, also known as the Daily Grind. Sounds pretty modern, honestly. Item number, SCP-57. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-57 has been constructed to facilitate the no, Site-57 has been constructed to, facil to facilitate SCP-57 as relocation is not feasible. It is highly improbable that any outside knowledge of the artifact exists based on the circumstances of its discovery and that security uh, is of minimal uh, of concern. No concerning procedures are required other than the prevention of unauthorized access. All research will be delegated to with Dr. Lewis and Dr. Er Wilson unless further er specified. Due to, due to the irretrievable ability of those placed inside SP-57, access will be granted with no fewer than two mem with the approval of no fewer than two members of, of O5. Description, SP-57 is a subterranean chamber with the approximate cylindrical height of 3 meters and diameter of 18 meters. Artifact is composed of impenetrable osaic slate colored stone. Inside the chamber are dozens of parallel of head mount analysts extending from floor to ceiling that slide in various directions while well, SP-57 is active. It was discovered meters below blank on blank during the, the construction of, of a secure containment and enclosure for or SCP unknown. Consequently, SP blank was assigned an alternate location at site blank. An entrance to the chamber is located on the north northeast side. Right. When a human enters the door struts and the walls inside the chamber move in such a way as to require the subject's constant attention to maintain a safe course for the artifact. The monoliths slowly open and close until oh, the subject either surrenders or exhausts themselves. At which time, S57 crushes them and reverts to its original inactive state. After a period of approximately 20 seconds, the process lasts only as long as the subject inside SCP-57 is alive and has proven to take days. Extending testing proposals to gauge the limits of the artifact have been discouraged. All tests on animals, machines, and cadavers have proven futile. Only a living, breathing human is being is able to initiate the process upon entering SCP-57. Instant Report SCP-57-1 during the excavation of the artifact, a worker employed by Foundation for the Unearthing Process entered the chamber without permission at 12.57 on a date. Upon entering the artifact, the door shut and a dull rumble began to emanate from the chamber. Standard lockdown procedures was initiated and all personnel in the vicinity were ev evacuated. A remote operated oct vehicle, or ROV, I actually also I'll call it ROV, it sounds like a name was employed in order to safely determine the cause of the event and gauge any possible threat of SC-57. Aside from the rumbling noises produced during the event, no anomalous effects outside of the artifact were observed. At 4.32 a.m. of the following day, SC-57 suddenly shut down and returned to its original state as the door shifted back into its open position. At 5.32 a.m., the area was declared safe and it the excavation process was completed without further or instant. The worker in question was never recovered. That's interesting. Experiment Log 57-1 A controlled experiment for the purpose of exploring the interior of SCP-57 was requested by I, 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 Dr. 
There's Lewis and, and Watson on a date. And approved shortly thereafter by O5 Council. D-1021 was equipped with a radio able to send and receive transmissions to and from the doctors. Upon entering the chamber, the RPAC behaved as expected with the door irreverently shining behind D-1021. The following is a transcript of the communication between Dr. Or Lewis, Dr. Watson, and D-1021. Hey, you didn't tell me the door would close. Can you open it again? This place seems to be keep it, jeebies. Negative. Please proceed as advised and describe your surroundings. Okay, well, there are a bunch of sewed columns in here. They keep rearranging their positions. I... D-1021, what's your say? It is. Dang, columns stuck up on me. They're moving around. Urge yourself so they... What is it? The columns behind me are closing up. The ones ahead of me are spreading out. I don't like this. Can't see the door anymore. Stay calm. Move with the columns and you'll be fine. If I stand still, they'll crush me. I have to keep moving or they'll all crush me. How long am I going to be in here? It'll be over soon. You're doing fine. Just keep moving. But what if I'm trapped in here? I... <laughs> I'm trapped and they're going to crush me in. The... Hey, listen. Get a hold of yourself. The columns will eventually lead you to an exit. Please relax and continue. So that comes to the arms down noticeably. So, there's an exit? Thank god. I was scared there for a second that I'd never... Superfluous analog expunged. Yep. Keep it up and you'll be right as rain. You're doing a great job. You have no ultra making for all once this is over. The experiment continues without incident for another 41 minutes. At this point, D1021 becomes noticeably distressed again. I saw how big this place is from the outside. Am I going in a circle? Negative. Continue to proceed through the opening columns. You should find the exit. There is no freaking exit. You tra er, trapped me in here and now I'm freaking trapped. Someone begins to hyperventilate again. <laughs> you are not trapped, D1021. Continue to the exit and... Or you'll be forced to... Forced to what? There's nothing you can do with me! I'm gonna freaking die! I'm gonna die! D1 and 0, 2, 1. Panicking will only exacerbate at your, your situation. Focus! D1021 breaks into tears. He continues to cry for the next two hours as he makes his way through the columns and does not reply to any questions. Eventually, the crying ceases. So, this is it. I'm gonna die. I guess I'll just stop and close my eyes. Maybe it won't be so bad. Several minutes of silence. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. The 1021 continues to repeat this for several minutes. Eventually, he trails off and falls all silent. The 1021? The 1021 stops in his trap. X. Breathing heavily, breathing slowly but heavily, faint sobbing is audible. The 1021, please, please proceed through the room as advised. I. I, the 1021, unsobbing abruptly, it cuts off. Brief, loud cracking and zapping sounds are heard before the transmission is lost. It's lost. Strangely, the 1021 did not report any sightings of the remains of the excavation worker lost in event 571. 
Accordingly, no efforts were made for the recovery of the 1021's remains. As a result of this inconclusive data, reclassification of SCP-857 to Euclid is pending. <sighs> that was an interesting SCP. Now we're going on to the next one, SCP-58. I almost want to make this a own video, but I also want to get through with these as quickly. So let's continue. The Heart of Darkness. Not sure if it is what I think it is. It most likely is. <sighs> All right. Item number SCP-58, Object Class Keter. Special containment procedures. SCP-58 is to be kept in isolation by five by five by five meter containment chamber at all times. While also because instructions of of three meters or ten feet, it's of reinforced heat resistant steel, backed with a further ten meters or three feet of reinforced concrete. SCP-58 is to be fed a live cow every three days. Maintenance is to be conducted every 60 minutes while SCP-58 is dormant, and every 50 minutes when SCP-58 is active. Under no circumstances is SCP-58 to be allowed an out of its containment area. SCP-58 is to be recorded is to be audio recorded at all times. No personnel are to listen to SCP-58 for more than in 30 minutes at a time. In the case of escape, facility is to be considered compromised and the addition of on-site nuclear weaponry is to commence. To date, SV-58 has been responsible for the death of at least 149 Class C personnel and 14 agents at its current site. SV-58 resembles a bovine and heart with four alterpot like legs, used primarily for movement and four tentacles of adjustable length covered with razor, with razor striped spines. It has a single striped stinger on its rear where the whole of the ear of the cava would be in a typical organ. SV-58, its tentacles can be whipped to a distance of 3.2 meters or 10.5 feet. That speeds in excess of 3 Hundred and twenty kilometers per hour or two hundred miles per hour. SV fifty eight is extremely hostile and will use every opportunity afforded to it to inflict damage on its surroundings. SV fifty eight has been shown to be highly resilient to trauma and should be approached with caution, even when apparently incapacitated. SV fifty eight is highly mobile and capable of rapid movement on both horizontal and vertical surfaces. It has been recorded at reaching a speed of approximately ninety kilometers. It's an hour or 55 miles per hour in short bursts, covering distances up to 200 meters or 656 feet. And has the ability to accelerate from 0 to max speed in less than 2 seconds. It has been shown to use its tentacles to, for increased leverage and stability, as well as utilizing them to pull itself to other surfaces at high speeds. SC-58 speaks in a human voice, though no method of producing sound has been observed in its, its physiology. It speaks with the vocal tone and accent of an elderly British male with a slight lisp and deep voice. SC-58 talks constantly, regardless of conditions. Even when attacking, SC-58's voice and pace of speech are unchanged. The speech of SC AP fifty eight it lacks any any detectable correlation to events, persons, or exterior locations involved with SV fifty eight. See transcript interview of interview fifty eight four. Note SV fifty eight was first encountered at site blank as it came out of blank of the expunge. SV-58 was uh, extremely hostile and appeared to be very agitated. 
Initially, SCE-58 attacked site unknown, which resulted in the death of an unknown amount of faculty and agents. SCE-58 went on to attack the nearby town of, of unknown, resulting in the death of over redacted citizens and destruction of 70% of the surrounding buildings. Post breach analysis determined that a majority of the deaths are attributable to fire and fire related injuries, resulting from a, um, a widespread of stinger fluid by SV 58 from a large structure. This is also blamed for a majority of structural damage. Blank by SV 58 aid account accounts for only 8% of, of total deaths, with major evidence data expunged. SV-58 has was finally contained after being crushed and incapacitated by a large amount of masonry from a building that had collapsed on top of it. SV-58 was in, in extracted and transferred to Blank by agents and FDF teams. SV-58 was uh, contained at Blank for three weeks, during which it made minimal attempts to move, which related both to physical damage and bloody from Blank during the little initial breach incident. Testing the period was limited, with SV-58 still maintaining a high threat level even in its, in its impaired state. <sighs> SV-58 breached containment on a date during an attempt to transfer to SV containment site, causing multiple deaths and injuries. SV-58 was eventually incapacitated by Dr. Blank, who managed to subdue SV-58 by running it over with an M1 tank. Very beneath the armored vehicle, SV-58 was subsequently is secured and transported to Armed Biocontainment Area 14. Addendum The SCP-1175 containment team has observed significant agitation in SCP-1172 on a number of dates that coincide with prolonged breaches of SCP-58's containment. Additionally, personnel assigned to AI-2471-GH2's maintenance have reported inexplicable high privatizations during similar time frames. Investigation into possible connections is pending RAISA approval. RAISA. That's familiar. Transcript of an uh, interview, 58-4. I had dreams of the queen wonders that lives inside the hearts of love and silent treatments of all the early that I knew who were once whole. What is your name? I seek the revelations of all that the holy told to the unwise and dreams of cold embers and sunlight that fade across the lakes of black blood and then snakes that eat the loaves of children from um, um, lamb trees in autumn. What is your name? Endless suffering is a woe of ignorant men who never lack to seek the depth of their own hearts and only see the wealth of a poor or would suffer it into flames on back and knife wounds of silver and brutal gladness. Where are you from? The nightmare is a dream to the nameless slug that wanders across minefield old and the remains of dear Aaron kings. This is some creepy ass. Ah! Nightshade is Jeff. I was in all. All his blinks that sort. Or right through the bile of newborn plagues. It's not worth a mother's milk and dreams before. Or anything it was ever evil. Ah! Let him go. In seconds, the son. And his being like drums and, and all, all hearts and. Eat the ear of noise. Screaming is cut short abruptly. Ah. The central violence of less it is all the assurance you will ever need to know the worth of life. Oh.
That's a story for another day. It's a, it's a tell or cannon hub. I'm not sure which. Anyway. SCP-59. Radioactive mineral. Item number SV-59, Object Class Keter. A single specimen of SV-59 is kept at site at 11B inside a graded at Z at a laminate shielding box composed of depleted uranium, tantalum, tin, steel, copper, and aluminum. Surrounding SV-59's containment box is a 7 by 7 by 7 meter array of steel hold as a level 4 biohazard area and surrounding by three surrounded by three centimeters of lead shielding. This area is to be sprayed daily with a solution of methyl oh, isocyanide oh, to prevent an overgrowth of SCP-59-1. Personnel entering in an SCP-59 affected area are cautioned to wear appropriate best biohazard protection as well as Type K-59 and B irradiation shielding. They are to remain in the area for no more than 15 minutes as the irradiation shielding is only partially effective. SCP-51 infestations found in the wild should be contained by removing the SCP-59 specimen responsible and inserting all of observed SCP-59-1. Large underground infestations are best neutralized by fuel, air, of our ex explosives. Additional specimens of, of SV-59 are not needed for experimentations and should be transported to Site 11B for incineration by plasma arc at 10,000 Kelvin. Description: SV-59 is a radioactive mineral of unknown origin, superficially resembling skillet, no, shillet. I don't know. A component of SCP-59 is believed to originate in an alternate universe and to be responsible for its anomalous properties. In addition to alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, SCP-59 produces a previously unknown type of radiation, apparently unique to the object, tending to say delta radiation. Delta radiation is accompanied by Icherenkov radiation, visible as a blue glow. Delta radiation is only partially contained by standard radiation shielding. The rest results have been obtained using laminate shielding with an additional super dense metal layer. This reduces the effective range of delta radiation from approximately 20 meters to approximately 6 meters. When an area is exposed to delta radiation for more than 15 minutes, an unknown species of fungus, designated 59.1, begins to grow on any exposed surface. The fungus does not require any standard nutrition, but will die within hours of removal from a dead of a radiation source. SU-59-1 itself is itself reactive but does not emit delta radiation. However, if critical mass <sighs> approximately unknown a kilogram squared of SP-59-1 is allowed out to grow. Dutch radiation from an unknown source other than SCP-59 will appear in the area, further support earning SCP-59-1 growth. Interesting readers may consult Dr. Blank for a series of space-time stress and merger of alternate realities. Within 18 hours, the infected mass will become transparent and disappear, presumably into the universe as the source of Delta Radiation. The process is then continuous with SCP-5091 infecting new material. SCP-591 will infest both living beings and inanimate objects, humans and animals infected with SCP-59-1 
A5901 become immune to the growing effects of ionizing radiation, but aggressively merge with SP5901 and eventually have all tissues replaced by fungal growth. But generally non-violent, they will attempt to expose in uh, unaffected individuals to SP5591. SP5991 infections do not appear to be directly contagious, but only spread by contact with outer radiation. However, long-term exposure to SP5591 and one has not been adequately tested to roll out, considering it a biohazard, as well as a known radiation hazard. Hmm. Infected individuals are so capable of communication, describe seeing a world entirely covered with SP 591, where much of the surface is composed of SP 59. It is unclear whether this is a hallucination or a view into the source of SCP-59. In fact, these are generally pleased with their, their condition often referred to being in the blue light of heaven. SCP-59-1 is affected by most fungicides, but new growth will continue to grow as long as SCP-59 is present. Early stage SCP-59-1 infection in humans may be treated with, with greasyovin. However, the treatment is 90% likely to lead to death by radiation poisoning. Treating individuals lose their immunity to radiation or will already have absorbed a lethal dose prior to the treatment. Late stage treatment should not be attempted as too much tissue will be a good very to SCP-091. Expunged. The remains of failed treatment should be kept out of range into S359, otherwise data expunged. SCP-59 specimens have been discovered in eight different underground locations across a range of 500 of uh, 5,000 kilometers. No pattern has emerged for or their appearance. Specimens range from 1 to 10 kilograms in size and are not part of the normal rock formations in the area where they have been found. Dr. Blank has recorded and, and, and analyzed the patterns of radiation emitted by the contained SV 591 colony and believes SV 591 may be sapient and is able to communicate via controlled emissions of radiation. Initial attempts to analyze this language revealed data expunged. <sighs> I'm going to do something really quickly and then we'll go on to SVP 60. That's better. SV60, also known as the Inferno Occult Skeleton. Item number, object, uh, item number, SV60, object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. The grove which contains SV60 is currently contained in a series of specially constructed greenhouses at satellite at site 6060 060. Wait, site 66060. <laughs> that was funny. Anyway, specimens are to be pruned regularly to keep at a man full size. First of are banned from smoking within 5 kilometers of satellite site of the site. First are to refrain from bringing lighters, matches, tasers, or any other tools readily available while starting a fire into satellite site 60. Into the site, SV60 specimens are to be are twice daily and checked weekly for dead plant matter and saplings. Dead matter and saplings are to be pruned, shredded, and composted, and composted properly in the dead case facility on site. Afterwards, it's returned to SV60's container and chamber. Dragments of SV60 may not be moved off site for any reason, 
without explicit written permission from two or more level four personnel. In the event of a breach by SV if by SV sixty the alpha personnel are to enter lockdown mode and activate on-site fire suppression systems. Redundant on-site fire suppression systems have been installed throughout the site, including water and, and chemical retardants will be uh, utilized in tandem in the event of a container breach. Formal extinguishers are to be kept available at all times. Containment Chamber R60 Alpha 001 is to be dedicated a circular containment and chamber. Is dedicated a circular containment chamber designed to contain SV60 Alpha during testing. This chamber is constructed of concrete with a 0.2 meter thick asbestos coating, with a series of chimneys to allow for ventilation and of heat during containment. The walls are fitted with 24 CO2 projectors evenly spaced at 45 degree angles along the walls and will activate the pre in the presence of temperatures exceeding 200 degrees Celsius. One kilogram of SV60 material is to be kept within containment chamber 60 alpha 1 to be burned in the event of a breach. Description SCP-60 is a grove of 17 white oak trees. The grove is spread across approximately 8, eight acres in rural northeastern Minnesota. A house on the property was demolished during the construction of Satellite, six, of satellite Site 6660 after being combed by the Foundation personnel for information regarding SCP-60. See Addendum. When burned, SCP-60 will produce an entity henceforth designated SCP-60-Alpha SCP-60-Alpha appears to be an animate adult human skeleton. Standing approximately 2.3 meters tall and surrounded by bright, bright, by bright white flames. SCP-60-Alpha initially burns at a temperature of approximately 1500 degrees Celsius or 2730 degrees Fahrenheit and will attempt to cause as much damage as possible when alive. Burning as little as 20 grams of SCP-60 will cause SCP-60-Alpha to appear. Only one instance of SCP-60 Alpha will appear at any time. It is theorized that at the Skelly Boy is a is a unique entity. And yeah, that's my nickname for it because I'm not saying that over and over. The Skelly Boy is extremely dangerous, having proven to be hostile and relatively intelligent. It appears to be a single recurring entity showing growing familiarity familiar, familiarity with satellite site sixty six. 60s layouts. Over the course of uh, several manifestations, when given the opportunity, it will throw itself at flammable materials in an effort to cause damage, and assault personnel with a focus on grappling and strangulation. Additionally, it has proven capable of running at speeds it's of up to 80 km per hour or 50 miles per hour in short bursts and leaping approximately 5 meters from a running start. Due to the extreme if temperature is produced by Skelly Boy right during the initial all stages of manifestation, along with its physical capabilities, it is capable of causing large uncontrolled fires and widespread property damage if left unchecked. Skelly Boy appears to be intentionally avoid appears to intentionally avoid burning instances of SV60 when it becomes active. If Skelly Boy is introduced to a high enough volume of water or other flame retard material over a short amount of time, it will begin to weaken to the point that it will collapse into dust. Collapse will occur suddenly with low warning. Skelly Boy will continue to pose a threat up until it's collapsed. 
The volume of suppressive material required to subdue the Scully Boy is markedly less than what would be expected to quench a heat source of its intensity. With volumes of approximately 500 liters proving sufficient, areas burned by the Scully Boy will begin to yield sapling instances of SP60 over the following 46 weeks. <sighs> Only one wave of sapling growth will follow any containment given containment breach. It said saplings are easily pulled and should be composted and supplied to SV60's normal containment ch chambers. Additional information regarding S uh, regarding in 60. The contain the property containing SV60 contained a burned out secluded house upon foundation acquisition. According to civilian sources, the house as his previous owner was a Jonathan Carl, who is reported to have been a somewhat solitary eccentric, with the tendency towards bitterness and, no and nihilism. Mr. Carl was reported as a missing person in late 1996, several months after having been having suddenly cut off all ties to family members and friends. The last person to have had contact with Jonathan Coyle was his brother Christopher via a telephone phone call. According to his brother, Coyle had developed an interest in the study of Victorian era occultism. Furthermore, he, he reported that Jonathan Coyle had seemed normal up until the phone call, at which point he told Christopher never to contact him again. Later in the year, a mail a carrier visited the home to deliver a notice of foreclosure. Finding it instead as a burned out shell. Examination showed that the fire began in the living room in the general vicinity of the fireplace. It is now assumed that SCP that Scully Boy manifested within the house while Coral Bell earned the SP60 in the fireplace. Considering Scully Boy's his nature, White House was not entirely destroyed during this alleged manifestation is as of yet unknown. No human remains were found within the structure. Jonathan Corhill's whereabouts, whether he is dead or alive, are currently unknown. My guess is that Jonathan Corhill is Skelly Boy. Makes sense, I guess. Anyway, this has been SCP-5657, 58, 59, and 60. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you next time for some uh, more SCPs. Please leave a like, please comment on the video, and please subscribe to my channel, as all of those things really do help a lot.